welcome. Um, I'm going to teach how to pour acrylic paint over the vase I have in front of me here, which is just a normal glass vase. I bought this from a shop called The Range and it was about five pounds, yes, English pounds. Um, so it's just a normal glass vase. I've cleaned it, washed it with water, soapy water, and I've wiped it down with uh, a lint-free cloth with rubbing alcohol to make sure that every single fingerprint is off. I've got my gloves on as you can see. So I wiped it down all over. There's alcohol on there with the cloth. Um, underneath the vase is a white canvas. Underneath the canvas is my scales, which is, so if I put the vase down on the canvas, it will make an indent. So this lifts the center of the canvas up and then underneath is a cake, rotating cake stand. So put it all back together again. That's a great platform, but the vase needs to be raised up. So in order to do that, I have a big pot of white gesso paint with white tack, you can't get blue tack, around the top so that it securely it sticks the vase to the top nice and securely. Well, I've had some disasters where I, when they come to lift the vase off, it wobbles on its bottle and falls off. I'm just going to take it off camera a second and push it down firmly on the table and make sure it's really stuck on. So that's, see, stuck on now. Fantastic. I also have to make sure that it's level and it's not. So I'm going to get it completely level by just pushing it over to one side. Oh, that's even worse. I need to go that way, opposite way. That's good. That's okay. So you can pick these up at any builder's merchants. Invaluable when you're pouring, everything needs to be level, so that looks good. Now, my colors are um, it's just not just acrylic paint, so I'll just talk quickly how I mix my paints. Um, and I'll show you just one color um, the white. So, I've got titanium acrylic paint, titanium white. This is Galleria acrylic by Winsor Newton. That is mixed a third paint to a third PVA glue. And then I also use a pouring medium called Floetrol. You have to shake, shake it well before you use it. So a third paint, third PVA, PVA glue, and a third pouring medium Floetrol. And I, then I top it up with water until it gets to the consistency of runny honey. I'm just gonna take the lid off and give it a stir and show you how runny the paint is, the mixture is. Okay, so that is how you want it to be, like runny honey or melted ice cream. Okay, now these containers you can get on any online shop, I've got them on Amazon. This is the biggest size. They're ketchup or sauce containers. That's, whoop, that's what they look like when they're new. So I just fill up my mixtures and they keep for about three weeks in those containers, which is great because mixing the paint really takes up a lot of time. So now I'm gonna start pouring on top of the glass vase, we're ready. On my mix of colours, I'll talk through the colours as I go. Um, I'm going to steer clear of the white to start with. And I have, this is another Winsor Newton ivory black mixed with the Flow Troll PVA glue water. Same mixture. I've got a marble, glass marble, in the bottom of each of these containers. So, oop, <laughs> make sure that it's on. So when I give it a shake, you hear that rattle in the bottom? And that mixes the paint. Because once they're standing, they do, uh, they do, you know, it needs a good old shape before you start using them. So I'm going to start pouring around 
I might just pour around the top in a circle. This is very random, I've not done this kind of method before. There's so many different ways to pour your paint. This is has a technical name, it's called clean pour. So I'm pouring each individual colour instead of mixing them into a cup and then pouring them from a cup. This is Deco Art Extreme Sheen Metallic Ro Rose Gold mixed in a container. That's my next colour. Let's go round and round again. Get it to drip down the sides. Please don't worry, as you can see, it's starting to drip. If you miss, it's going to go onto the canvas and it's moving over my paints. They're hitting, as I'm rotating, it's hitting the paints. I don't want them to fall over. It's starting to drip down and the, it's going to drip down onto the canvas and I want it to do that. The next colour I have is um, my favourite paints make golden. They're very expensive. They're very highly pigmented, pigmented, if that's the right word. And that's um, Pyrol Red. And I've got a piece of stocking over the top of this tube because there was lumps in the paint. Um, so it filters out the lumps. I don't want the lumps going onto my vase. So let's go round with a red. Then the last color, I was going to use another metallic. So I've got three golds mixed here, three different golds. Um, I think I'm going to use the Deco Art 24 karat gold extreme sheen mixed in this pot here. Let's give that a circle. Hey, this is the vase completely. Now I've got a puddle on the top and I don't want to have a big puddle like that on the top. So I, I'm gonna actually, I can see lots of air bubbles in there. So I'm gonna give them a quick blast with my torch. I don't want air bubbles on, in, on this mixture at all. You need to get rid of them because they'll stay air bubbles as they start dripping down the vase. So I'm gonna blow the top um, of the vase uh, because there's too much paint on the top and it pulls and it takes such a long time to dry. So give it a blow. <sighs> And that should really start, you should really start seeing the design coming now. I really love doing that. I'm going to do that again. See, look, look here, look at this, get these kind of cell effects. So I really like doing that. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to do the same layer of colours. Um, so the black was first. So the black will be the last to come out. Shall I do it the other way around? No, let's do it the same. So I did a circle of black. A circle of, oh, I can't remember now. Oh yes, it was the rose gold. Go over the side as well. Oh, I'm covering up all those lovely cells, but never mind. Then we went pyro red. And then we went 24 karat extreme sheen gold. Whoa, there's a lot of paint on there. Let's do it again, blast it with the... Just a quick blast to get those bubbles. Okay, continue to drip. What I'm gonna do is fill in these gaps before I give it a blow with, what colours should I use? A mixture. So I'm gonna use the rose gold, start. So I'm filling in all those spaces, helping to encourage the paint to get down onto the canvas. It's got a long way to go but it's nice and runny. It takes a good two or three hours to completely drip off the vase. It takes a long time. So the pattern you see right now is not what you're gonna see 
in a couple of hours time. Right, the next one, we'll go with the red, pyrrole red, and fill in the gaps here. Get rid of that, I don't want that touching it. Down there, here. I'm trying to go as quick as I can. Yep, I'm round to the start again. Getting contaminated bottle tops. Black, ivory black. Not put any white on, as you can see. I showed you the white, but I quite like, it can dominate, and it can completely change the colors if I use the white. The black is doing a fabulous job. So I'm going to start with the black. And a 24 karat gold. Remember, I'm going to blow the top again, so I want to try and get those cells back. Right there. That's all going to drip off anyway, so that's all right. Okay, you can also touch the vase with your finger. So, right here, because all this is just going to fall off anyway. Use a different finger for that bit. There. Make sure all of those, it helps to pull it down so it's completely covered. You can see, you see the pretty pattern it's making on the canvas. I'm gonna make a picture out of that. So I've blown the torch the top. I might give it another blow so I can still see some bubbles coming through. Ooh, smoke it. Some smoke come off that way. Yep, let's go with another blast of air. Is it gonna. Oh, that's really nice. Really nice like that. I'm gonna blow it anyway. Air out right the way. And off it goes. I blew that all over myself. <laughs> only went on me everything else is out of the way all my paintings they would move everything has to get moved I'm so messy I can still see some bubbles so I'm going to give it a glass of a torch fast. Okay, and making this great design underneath. That gold has really taken over. I quite like it, that's good. And I'm going to check the design all the way around to see if I want to add or take away. But this is all going to continue to drip. So this here will probably end up down there. This bit here will end up down here, so believe me, it will not look like this when it's finished drying. And I can prove to you to that. I can show you a couple of vases that I've poured. I don't know if you're going to see them actually if I bring them in. Yeah, I'll bring in the orange one quickly just to show you what they look like on the canvas. So, no idea if you can see, that's the dried one. And the canvas. They haven't been varnished yet. That's what we're aiming for. Right, so this is gonna continue to drip and I'm gonna run my finger along the bottom as it starts to slow down to catch those drips because they will stay there as a the vase is drying. Um, so I'll be back in about 10 minutes to show you what it looks like because it's going to take 10 minutes to continue. Thank you, see you later. Hi, I'm back again. I made myself a nice cup of coffee whilst the vase was dripping. Mm. I don't know, it's still dripping 10 minutes ago. 
finished pouring the vase. This is what it looks like. So as it's dripped, I am running my finger, continually running my finger along the edge, bottom edge. I'm just putting the drips around the edge of the canvas. I don't like wasting any paint. You can see how much is coming off. How much the pattern's changed since we last looked at the vase and it will continue to change for the next two or three hours pulling down and I have to keep my eye on it I have to keep running my finger around the bottom um, I'm just going to show you uh, because I don't like wasting anything I'll just show you what I do with the drips so all the drips that have come off landing on the canvas. Then when I start tipping and turning the canvas, I'm gonna get drips fall onto this mat underneath, which is a special uh, silicone mat. And you can pick these drips off. Well, these aren't dry, but there's some dry ones. You just pull them off with your finger when they're dry. <laughs> it's landed. Oh, I told you I was clumsy. There you go, it's not dry anymore. It landed on the canvas. But I peel them off and put them and make all sorts of things out of them. I've got a pendant here which has a glass. Oh, it's stuck that one. <laughs> but that's the skin of the orange paw I showed. I showed you. It's not properly stuck on yet. You can buy these on the online shops. They're just little necklaces with cabochon glass. This is proper glass. They're not very expensive. They make nice little necklaces. That's all shiny with the gold. I just wanted to show you that. What we do. I'm going to now lift the vase over to the right. I have the platform ready for it to continue to drip. <sighs> Breathe. Because I've, I've dropped so many. I'm so clumsy. But as I lift, it's stuck on a little bit. Over to the right. Place it down carefully. And breathe. Lovely. Now we're left with the canvas. I'm going to put my cloth, wipe my hands again. Which I'm going to tip and turn. First of all, I'm going to try to fill this space in the middle by just taking the canvas around and around and making the paint. I'm gonna remove a few objects underneath. I don't want them getting covered in paint. So it's a turntable and the scales and my rack out of the way. So I've just got my mat now ready to catch these colorful drips. There's a lot of gold on there. Oh, debating and a lump. Blue lump. Get rid of you. Blue lump. Where do you get come from? There's lots of air bubbles in there as well, so I'll give it a torch in a minute. Hopefully, with a maybe a bit of encouragement with my finger or a little bit more paint. I think I might put some red in the centre with some with a, re a red circle with a bit of black. I can hear a fly in my workshop. Flies are a nightmare. If you land on any of this, you've had it. Listen to him. Oh, I didn't like that in the middle there. It'll get stretched out, so we Open the door when we're finished. They're still going round and round. And uh, I will add a little bit of gold into that centre bit. I'm going to continue to put some more colours around the outside because I've got that paint's got a long way to travel. And 
contrast in there. And I might put some streaks of dark. Going through, let's just see what that does. Like a spider's web. I'm gonna go down to the right hand corner. It's starting to drip off now. Maybe put a bit more paint on there, I don't know. I like those black lines. I might put some more on cloth, hands. Put some red on. They're disappearing, but it's nice to have a little bit of contrast. Let's see if I can stretch this out into something that matches the bars. So we're going over to the right hand corner, aren't we? And a lot of that paint's going to just come off. There's quite a lot on there, and over it goes. Touch the corner, get the paint back to the centre. Hear it dripping onto the silicone mat. I'm just going to touch these gaps up with my thumb. They take a while. They're really difficult to get. Where's the weight of the paint gone? It's going to go over to the top left now. Do you see this design stretching out over here? And off it goes. Touch. Get the paint to come down. The edges. I'll do that in a minute. Where is it going now? Where are we now? Back into the center. And over. The bottom left or right corner now. And off it goes. Touch the edges. See where it wants to go now. It's only one corner left. There is an awful lot of gold, sparkly gold in that design. And the black's gone almost green, mixing with the copper and the red. It's got a long way to travel now. The last corner's the hardest. We want it to go down here. Whether I ought to put a little bit more paint on that. Is there a lump there? I don't know. Let's take some off the canvas. Right over that corner. Taking it off the silicone mat, I should say. Tipping. It's going. Going, going, going. Make sure I've got good coverage there. Oh, I nearly let go of the canvas. Ha <laughs> ha That would have been funny. So there we have it. Very shiny, it does match the uh, bars quite well. So I'm gonna continue just to pick up some of these drips and put them around the edge. On my finger. And to match this design up a little bit. And just like the bars, you have to run your finger around the bottom or use a spatula. to catch these strips, otherwise it continues to and all the paint will run off. You need to stop it, there's more edges here. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. 
You can always add to these canvas paintings. I could I could add some more black because there's there's not a lot of contrast. You know, there's a black streak here, but maybe I want to. Oh, maybe I just want to leave it like that. I think it looks nice like that. Really matches the vase, like a marbled effect. So I'm going to leave that now. And thank you for watching. I've got to wipe my hands, to turn the camera off. Let's place this guy down over here. I'll put it over to the left hand side. Just wipe my hands, switch off the camera, and we'll be back when they're all dried. Show you the finished result. Thank you. Hello. So here are the finished pieces the vase and I'm afraid a different painting because the one I did that was underneath this vase sold so I had to um, do another one which is good news but um, there's the painting so if I tilt it towards the light if you can see the gold shimmer there it's really picking up that 24 karat deco art gold it's a lovely shimmer there and lots of cells and lacing that's the painting and then the vase itself here is has dried beautifully and has been varnished and it almost looks like tree bark with that gold shining through. I just pick it up where you can see it's shining in the light. And the bottom, I put my little sticker on the bottom. But even the bottom's gorgeous. Look at that gold there. That is stunning. I am so pleased with this vase. And we're being joined here by a couple of pussy cats. There's Dutty. There's, oh, there's Dapple sniffing, and there was another one disappeared. Anyway, there you go. The um, canvas was varnished with high gloss varnish, Liquitex, professional. There's about three coats on the the canvas painting and I spray the vase with a clear sealer gloss plastic coat spray and again there's three coats of varnish on the vase I cleaned up the edges around the top so you could put flowers you can clean the inside but you have to be a bit careful when you're cleaning the outside. It has got varnish on it, but I wouldn't want to scrub it. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I am so pleased with that vase. I'm pleased with the painting too. Thank you very much for watching. Look at this day. It's so beautiful here in the West Country, in the UK. Take care. See you soon. Bye.